Hello friends. We'll discuss the most important topic that is cooling tower. Cooling water is the most useful utility in the process industry. Let's see what is utility. Utility is inseparable part of process plant. It is not counted directly as a product, which leaves company premises. But ignoring them may have significant effect on overall profit. So what are the utilities? Steam, cooling water, air, refrigerant, brine, hot oil, inert gases like nitrogen, helium, argon, electricity are considered as the utilities. Now let's compare the cooling utilities. We have two different options to use as the utility. One is cooling water and another is cooling air. So first point is cooling water have higher heat transfer coefficient compared to air. Highest temperature of cooling water is fixed and there is no such limit in air. If we use cooling water the equipment will be smaller size compared to air. Cooling water having higher operating cost compared to air. Now let's start our topic of discussion that is cooling tower. Content we will discuss are Types of cooling tower Performance evaluation of cooling tower Efficient system operation Flow control strategies Energy saving opportunities Assessment of cooling tower and more Let's start the topic Cooling towers are a very important part of many chemical plants. The primary task of a cooling tower is to reject heat into the atmosphere. They represent a relatively inexpensive and dependable means of removing low-grade heat from cooling water. The makeup water source is used to replenish water lost to evaporation. Hot water from heat exchanges is sent to the cooling tower. The water exits the cooling tower and is sent back to the exchangers or to other units for further cooling. Working Principle Humidification Operation This operation is concerned with the interface transfer of mass and of energy which result when a gas is brought into contact with a pure liquid in which it is essentially insoluble. The matter transferred between phases in such cases is the substance constituting the liquid phase which either vaporizes or condenses. I sense mass transfer is only feasible when gas is unsaturated with vapor. Now let's check the components of cooling tower. Major components of the cooling tower are as per below 1. Frame and casing 2. Fill, splash slash film, 3. Cold water basin 4. Drift eliminator 5. Nozzles 6. Fans. Frame and casing. Most towers have structural frames that support the exterior enclosures, casings, motors, fans, and other components. With some smaller designs, such as some glass fiber units, the casing may essentially be the frame. Fill. Most towers employ fills, made of plastic or wood to facilitate heat transfer by maximizing water and air contact. Fill can either be splash or film type. With splash fill, water falls over successive layers of horizontal splash bars, continuously breaking into smaller droplets, while also wetting the fill surface. Plastic splash fill promotes better heat transfer than the wood splash fill. Film fill consists of thin, Closely spaced plastic surfaces over which the water spreads, forming a thin film in contact with the air. These surfaces may be flat, corrugated, honeycombed, or other patterns. The film type of fill is the more efficient and provides same heat transfer in a smaller volume than the splash fill. Cold water basin, the cold water basin, located at or near the bottom of the tower receives the cooled water that flows down through the tower and fill. The basin usually has a sump or low point for the cold water discharge connection. In many tower designs, the cold water basin is beneath the entire fill. 
drift eliminators, these capture water droplets entrapped in the air stream that otherwise would be lost to the atmosphere. Air inlet, this is the point of entry for the air entering a tower. The inlet may take up an entire side of a tower across flow designu or be located low on the side or the bottom of counter flow designs. Louvers, generally, cross flow towers have inlet louvers. The purpose of louvers is to equalize airflow into the fill and retain the water within the tower. Many counter flow tower designs do not require louvers. Nozzles, these provide the water sprays to wet the fill. Uniform water distribution at the top of the fill is essential to achieve proper wetting of the entire fill surface. Nozzles can either be fixed in place and have either round or square spray patterns or can be part of a rotating assembly as found in some circular cross section towers. Fans, both axial, propeller type, and centrifugal fans are used in towers. Generally, propeller fans are used in induced draft towers and both propeller and centrifugal fans are found in forced draft towers. Depending upon their size, propeller fans can either be fixed or variable pitch. A fan having non-automatic adjustable pitch blades permits the same fan to be used over a wide range of kW with the fan adjusted to deliver the desired airflow at the lowest power consumption. Automatic variable pitch blades can vary airflow in response to changing load conditions. Now let's discuss about the types of cooling towers. Majorly it has been classified in two types. One is natural draft. And second is mechanical draft. Natural draft towers use very large concrete chimneys to introduce air through the media. Due to the large size of these towers, they are generally used for water flow rates above 45,000 cubic meters per hour. These types of towers are used only by utility power stations. Mechanical draft. Mechanical draft towers utilize large fans to force or suck air through circulated water. The water falls downward over fill surfaces, which help increase the contact time between the water and the air. This helps maximize heat transfer between the two. Cooling rates of mechanical draft towers depend upon their fan diameter and speed of operation. Since, the mechanical draft cooling towers are much more widely used, the focus is on them in this chapter. Mechanical draft towers. Forced draft A sense air is blown into the tower by fan at the bottom. I sense recirculation of hot and humid discharged air into the fan is possible. I sense easy for inspection. Induced draft air is sucked from the tower from the fan mounted on top. More uniform internal distribution of air. Comparison of mechanical draft and natural circulation cooling towers. Fan power will be used in mechanical draft not in natural draft. Draft created in mechanical draft is by fan while for natural draft it's by natural air media. If we talk about advantages, in mechanical draft tower height is reduced, low pump head, and water temperature control facility. While natural draft it's minimum operating cost. If we talk about water flow rates natural draft are useful when flow requirement is higher than 45,000 meter cube per hour. In mechanical draft cooling tower, cooling rate depends on wet bulb temperature, fan diameter, and speed of fan while in natural. Circulation it depends on wet bulb temperature and humidity. And lastly for application. Mechanical draft are used for small and medium scale and natural drafts are used for power plant, heavy load, low wet bulb temperature and high inlet temperature. Next and most important topic is performance of cooling tower. Three different terminology needs to understand for understanding cooling tower performance first is range, second is approach, 
and third is cycles of concentration. Range, difference between cooling tower inlet and outlet temperature. I sense approach, difference between cooling water outlet temperature and wet bulb temperature. I sense higher the approach, smaller the size of cooling tower. I sense cycles of concentration, COC, is the ratio of dissolved solids in circulating water to the dissolved solids in makeup water. Generally concentration of dissolved solid is measured in terms of its chloride concentration. Material balance around cooling tower as per the diagram the terminology used for the material balance are mentioned in cooling tower we need to add make up water which is denoted by mc equals circulating water unit of meter cube per hour e equals evaporated water in meter cube per hour w e equals windage loss of water in meter cube per hour d equals draw off or blow down water in meter cube per hour xm equals concentration of chlorides in makeup water m xc equals concentration of chlorides in circulating water c so overall balance is m that is equal to sum of e w and d that is sum of evaporated water windage loss draw off same way for chloride balance equation is mentioned now let's check the parameters for the performance of cooling tower blowdown losses, depends upon cycle of concentration, COC, and could be given by following equation performance of cooling tower blowdown losses, depends upon cycle of concentration, COC, and could be given by following equation, blowdown losses are calculated by evaporation loss divided cock minus 1 same way cooling tower effectiveness is calculated by range divided sum of range and approach multiply 100 and evaporative rate can be calculated by mentioned equation now let's check with an example example estimate the cooling tower range capacity Approach and effectiveness with the following parameters water flow rate through CT equals 130 cubic meters per hour inlet water temperature equals 42A degrees C outlet water temperature equals 37A degrees C ambient WBT equals 31A degrees C as per calculations range is difference of temperature so answer is 5 degree approach is difference of outlet water and wet bulb temperature temperature that is 6 degrees similarly we can calculate evaporation losses and blow down energy saving opportunities in cooling tower follow manufacturers recommended clearances around cooling towers and relocate or modify structures that interfere with the air intake or exhaust I sense optimize cooling tower fan blade angle on a seasonal and all load basis I sense on old counterflow cooling towers Replace old spray type nozzles with new non clogging nozzles. I sense periodically clean plugged cooling tower distribution nozzles. I sense balance flow to cooling tower hot water basins. I sense cover hot water basins to minimize algae growth that contributes to fouling. I sense optimize blow down flow rate, as per cock limit. Monitor approach. Effectiveness and cooling capacity for continuous optimization efforts, as per seasonal variations as well as load side variations. Consider cock improvement measures for water savings. I sense consider energy efficient blade adoption for fan energy savings. I sense consider possible improvements on CW pumps WRT efficiency improvement. I sense control cooling tower fans based on leaving water temperatures especially in case of small units. Factors affecting cooling tower performance capacity affecting parameters are heat dissipation and circulated flow rate with range for range, process side dictates its determination, function of the heat load and flow circulated approach and wet bulb temperature, in that close of the approach to the wet bulb. More expensive the cooling tower due to increased size size of tower, ranking parameters to be considered in sizing of tower is in the order of approaches first, then flow rate, 
followed by range, finally to wet bulb temperature. Fill media, types, splash fill or film fill cooling tower fan, sized to move a specified quantity of air through the system at a specified site. So this is all about cooling tower, for any query or suggestion please comment. Request for like and subscribe the channel for the further update. Thank you very much for watching regards chemical engineering world rush and L team.